Okay, so after the child listens, the imitation, then you have innovation. Innovation means the child begins to use the same structures but begins to make some changes. All right, some changes begin to be made. So if you look at, um, let me show you something else. This is after my daughter started reading Ramona Quimby. All right, was her favorite. So you find that the struct that there's imitation, but there's also a little bit of innovation, because now the names are still the same. All right, it's still Ramona, and um, they've got now. However, Ramona has got aliens who are coming to visit her. Okay, now you see the interesting thing here is, and. Can you see that all the, she, she made this book, right? So this is a book. Now what has happened is that she has taken the structure, all right? She knows what a book looks like. So you have a cover and then you have the book that's inside. All of these are things that you need to encourage in your children. You, you recognize it, right? Because it's, it's invention. Now then you can see that she follows what a page looks like, all right? So, when you get even to this stage, you see that she doesn't go across this way, but she goes down just like a book would. All right? So that is imitation because the structure is there. What we're trying to see is from the reading, you begin to get the structure, and then you get a little bit of in innovation. You also begin to start getting invention. The, the difference between innovation and invention is very, very similar. Innovation, the child still stays within familiar areas. Invention is when the child begins to take risks. Okay? So, I want you to keep this in mind because I'm going to show you a video clip a little bit later. And um, when you see the, when you watch the video clip, I want, I want you to pay, listen how the child goes through the listening, imitating, innovating and inventing, right? Okay. So what happens as parents, what happens if you keep this model in mind, keep the model in mind, listen, that the child would listen, imitate, innovate and invent. Then it is important for you to start giving opportunities for your children to hear literate language. This is an important phrase that we use, literate language. Why? Because literate language is actually very different from spoken language. When we speak, we don't speak in, in full sentences. I know there are some teachers who still prepare your students for oral and say you must speak in full sentences. Actually, nobody speaks in full sentences unless you're presenting, all right? You, you just listen to your own conversation. How many of you speak in full sentences all the time? We don't, all right? So it's important that you begin to hear the cadence of like This is why we talk about rhetoric, right? You have a year for language. And you know that spoken language has got a cadence, it's got a rhythm of its own. Written language has got a language or structure of its own. This is what we talk about, literate language. Right? So you need to expose them to books so that they begin to hear the rhythm and pattern of language being used. So they begin to understand things like um, that you actually, you, you, be, you develop a sense of punctuation by listening to reading. Because then you know where is the pause and where is there an end? That's where the child begins to get a sense of the sentence. All right? The reason why a lot of our children don't punctuate correctly is because they have not heard language being read in the way that it should be read. So when you begin to have a sense of hearing the language, you will understand a pause where a comma comes. You will understand the finality of a sentence where a full stop comes. You will begin to hear the rising intonation at the end of a, quest, a question, so you know where a question mark comes. So you get a lot of internalizing of the structures of language when the child begins to read, right? Or hear being read. And then when they begin to imitate sentences, especially when they start exploring with vocabulary. Thank you so much for helping me and Bini through the first few days of school trauma. Underline. <laughs> Alright? So, no, it's okay. That's fine. I'm sure they can read the trauma. It's, 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 that's, that's experimenting. Alright? And you can see that my, my daughter is trying to emphasize 
both the feeling she had of trauma of school, but also she was hoping that I will notice the new word that's being used. Right? So when you see words like that being used, that's that's when you want to affirm. You can go back. You can also want to affirm and and recognize the experimentation of the of the vocabulary, right? So encourage your children to express express through their talking. But most and also most important, ask questions of the child, especially when the child is writing. Ask questions so that um, sorry, when your child when you're reading with your child, when you're reading with your child, ask questions of the text before you turn the page. Ask them what do you think is going to happen next? All right? Or if you're looking at the picture, say why do you think this person is wearing this? Ask questions of the text because then you can support the child asking questions of their own writing. All right? When you ask questions of their own writing, it's the way the child develops details. The child will not develop details unless he knows what is it that you want to know. And so the practice comes at the point that you're reading. I think those of you who are teachers and, and you know you have, you have used the Stella method that um, the classes use, there's a lot of questioning that goes on. All right? The child looks at the picture, but the teacher asks a lot of questions. The questions are all guided. Right? The questions are put into the Stella package. And, and you guide the questions largely because when the child starts viewing, you also want the child to start talking about what she has seen. Right? So in a nutshell, if you want your child to write, you need to talk, you need to read, and you just need to create a family culture of reading and writing. There's no escape. All right? There's no escape. It's, it's just a family culture of, of reading and writing. We need to find opportunities for the child to write almost anything and everything. So, I'm going to show you this YouTube video. I, some of you might have seen it, but this is of a two-year-old. Right? Uh, not local, but it's very interesting. Because the child is... Um, okay, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I want you to listen to the child and then keep in mind, listening, imitating, innovating invention right and i also want you to listen to the questions that the mother the the aunt is asking of the child what? sorry it's jack in my in the house jack was very Where is jack in the house any food or any money so jack's mother told him to take it tell to my era by food <laughs> then and the old man asked Jack, you selling that cow? Jack said yes. Jack said yes. The old man said, I don't have any money or any food. But I will give you. I magic beans. And Jack said, okay. <laughs> when Jack got home, his mother was very angry. She said, Jack, five does any food. No, don't have any money. And she took the beans and she Mama the window. She threw the beans out the window and Jack went to bed and he He cried to was me to have any supper. But the next morning Jack fell. A, he saw a beanstalk and it was really high all the way up to the sky. Get a big beanstalk. Uh -huh. And Jack said, I wonder. I wonder what's up there. I wonder what's up there. So Jack decided to climb a beanstalk. And he climbed like this. He climbed down, 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 down. Up, <laughs> up, up. up. <laughs> He climbed all the way up high, high in into the, the sky, up to the clouds, and beyond the clouds. And when he reached the very Wait, top, and poked the hip, and he saw giant house. a giant house. Jack walked across the cloud and opened the front door, which was twice as big. Big as he was. Big, big guy. He was. And he poked his head through yeah. and he tiptoed down the long hall and yeah. saw. Saw a kitchen. A 
giant kitchen. Yeah. And there was a giant table and giant chairs. And they climbed on top of one of the chairs. And what was on the table? There's some food. What kind? <laughs> what kind of food? There's some pizza. There was pizza. What else? Yes. And yogurt, and potatoes, and chicken, and applesauce, and yogurt. And he was so busy eating, he didn't notice someone had come through the door. It was a giant, the giant leg. Jack screamed. And he's so scared. He said, "Don't, don't let me." Don't yet be afraid. I don't hurt you. You're welcome to eat my food and take a nap in my bed, but make sure you leave before my husband comes home, for he will surely eat you. And he fell asleep and had the best dreams. But he was awoken by the giant lady. She said, Jack, you must get out, for my husband is home. So he ran out. But it was too late. The giant had already come home, so Jack hid behind a sack of flour. And when the giant came home, he said, Be faithful. I'm my bread. And the giant's wife said, Oh, husband, there's no human here. Eat your dinner. Yeah. And so, to be continued. For the child to have reached that stage, how many times do you think that the mother has read that story to him? Many, 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 many times, right? And, and this is imitation. So the child listens, he begins to imitate, right? But you can also see that there is innovation because you see that the mother kind of let him in. He says, so what kind of food was there? And, and then he started saying his own favorite food, right? Pizza and yogurt and chicken and applesauce. And this is obviously the kind of things that he likes to read. That is um, a kind of way in which we can personalize the story. So we begin to give the child opportunities to talk, right? So he reads, the, the mother reads, and then you begin to find that the child begins to internalize. And he internalizes, you can also see that when he says, up. He knows how to look up, right? So those are all the directional words are, are available to him. And then um, he also can see that when he says scared or he says afraid, you can hear the emotion coming through. So that kind of invention, that's innovation where he begins to um, see from, from his receptive skills, you can see the movement being made to the productive skills, right? So Sue Palmer, who is, um, who is the author of this book, um, which is called Speaking Frames, it's, it's quite a good book, um, talks, essentially she's a, she's a proponent of this method that we are talking about from talk to writing, that the child has to start speaking um, before she starts writing. And she talks about the two horses, right? If writing is a cart, then um, there are two horses that need to be pulling this cart. And the child begins to get language at two levels. One is the text level, the other is at the sentence level. If you have too much of focus on the sentence level, especially if you start giving the child um, lined paper with one, two, three, four, five, six, write me six sentences, you begin to start paying attention at the sentence level. The child begins to lose text level begins to focus too much on sentences. So we actually need to develop both levels, both at text level and sentence level. What do I mean? When the child is learning text level writing, this is when he starts reading and he begins to internalize how to organize his writing, All right, the organization. So you know that, that, that a, par a sentence begins here, a sentence ends here. A paragraph begins here, a paragraph ends here. This is how a book looks like and how a writing focuses like. So that is organizational level. Organizational level is also when the child begins to recognize different genre. This is a narrative story that I'm re reading. This is um, something that I'm reading from an encyclopedia. So that comes in when you expose the child to different kind of books. Right? And when we read 
books to him, then we need to also begin to use literate language. What does literate language mean when you're reading? That means when we read, when we start reading to our children. We do a, a, a specific, I mean, my children used to love this series of alphabet books that we had. So we had A for, we had A where there's a story of an astronaut and then um, we had different, different um, things that began with A. And one of the best things that my children like to say is the name of the, of the author. So we would say, this is the A book by, and then she would say, Jane Belk Moncure, right? So this is a favorite bit, even before um, she began writing. You begin to like create structures where you see, okay, this is by an author. And so you can see that when the, when the book started being written, you can't see in this one. Um, when the book started being written, you can see that you have got a sense of structure, you see? So they've got Janity Durai Presents. So this is the title. And you also have... Um, can you see this is by Janani Durai? So you've got, you've got a sense of what a book looks like. This is organizational, organizational at a global text level. And text level is when um, the child also begins to see where the sentences go, when do they end, right? And this is my, um, okay, I will, I will talk to you about this a little bit later.